Hello, I'm Libri Rich with Penfelt Studio in Portland, Oregon. Today, I'm going to teach you how to make super serpents, felted snakes using the craft of wet felting. We'll be using sheep's wool, warm soapy water, and the agitation of your hands to transform this loose fluffy fiber into this slithering snake. Before we start felting, we need to mix up some soapy water. I'm going to combine one cup of warm water with half a teaspoon of dish detergent. Now I'll take my pipe cleaner and I want to straighten it out a little bit. Then to make the head, I'll go about two inches from the end and fold it down. It doesn't have to be exact. Then I'll take that fold and kind of round it out a little bit and then twist it around. So this is the neck of the snake and this is the head. The first thing when I'm working with the wool fiber is to fluff it out a little bit. As I'm fluffing it, I can see that the fiber has a grain to it that goes this way. So the first step is to divide it into six equal strips. Now I want to wrap my fiber around my snake. So I'll take my first strip and just poke it through the hole of the head, like this and then I'll wrap the fiber around it. For my second strip, I'll take it and divide it in half so I have two short pieces. Then I'll take one piece and wrap it over the end of the pipe cleaner. So I've got the fibers going along the pipe cleaner this way. And then I'll take the next piece and cross over it. So that means now I've got the fibers kind of covering the whole head. To secure it, I'll take another piece of fiber and I'll start wrapping it around the snake. Now, I want to wrap it as tightly as I can. So you can see I'm kind of tugging it a little bit as I'm wrapping it. You can see that I really took my time to make the fiber smooth and neat. If you have any pieces that are falling off, oops, that one's kind of falling off. If you have any pieces that are like mine, take a minute to spread them out and really try and rewrap them tightly around your snake. The fiber should cling to it such that you could lay it down on the table and not have it all fall apart. I've got a gallon sized zip top bag and I'm gonna take my snake and lay it down inside the bag. Snug it in there in the bottom. And then I will take my warm soapy water that I mixed up earlier, and I'm going to put a quarter cup of water into the bag. So I just used a quarter cup measuring cup there. Then I want to kind of squeeze the air out of the bag and zip it up. Now to tell if I have enough water, I squeeze the snake and kind of squish the water and the suds around. So this looks pretty good. What I want it to look like is fully saturated with water. So I don't see any dry places on my snake, but also my snake is not swimming in water. Now it's time to start felting. I want to squeeze and massage my snake for five minutes, so I'm going to set my timer. 
and I'm gonna start just massaging my snake in the bag. I want the fibers to be bunching up at the bottom and I just want to give him a little back massage. I can rub it like this. Just scrunch it. Make sure the water is at the bottom. Okay, my timer is up. Before I take my snake out of my bag, I'm going to put a towel on my work surface. I have a moment where I've got some pipe cleaner sticking out. If you have that going on, you can kind of push the pipe cleaner in and then tug the wool over the top of that spot. So I just kind of pulled that wool over it and then that will felt over the pipe cleaner. And I've got an end here, it's a little folded. So also I'm gonna just tug it gently because it's pretty fragile, but I can kind of tug it so that it'll be more tail-like. Now this is still pretty thin for mine. So I'm gonna try adding a little bit of wool fiber on the outside and see if it will attach as I'm felting it. This is an experiment. You can try this with yours if you want. Okay, so there's my little patch experiment. We'll see how that works. I'm gonna roll my snake on a bamboo sushi mat. If you don't have a bamboo mat, you can just roll it on the towel. So I'll start by just gently rolling it back and forth. And I'm not pushing down too hard. I'm just sort of lightly rolling it. My fingertips are kind of resting on it. And the fibers are starting to rub back and forth on the texture of the bamboo. Now, one thing that happens immediately is that the snake starts to get dry because the water starts to go into the towel. So I can sprinkle just a little bit more water onto the snake. As I'm rolling it, I'm noticing that my snake is getting more uniform. The body is starting to shrink a little bit. Also, checking in on my patch, it is starting to attach to the body, so I'm optimistic that it will work. One thing about the patch is I need to make sure that it stays really saturated with water, so I keep adding water as I'm rolling it. My timer is up. I've been rolling it for about five minutes. Here's my completed snake. Let's compare it with a snake that I haven't felted yet. This is just a pipe cleaner with the wool fiber wrapped around. You can see how much the fiber has shrunk from your massaging the snake in the bag and then rolling it on the sushi mat. My patch worked pretty well. I don't see any pipe cleaner there, so that was a success. I'm also noticing that this snake grew quite a bit. It's the tail is a lot longer than the original pipe cleaner, which I kind of like. So before I let it dry, I want to bend my snake's body into a slithery shape. Here is my dry snake. And here's some crafty items I'm going to use to decorate. I've got some rhinestones and some wool felt, and then I have some craft glue.
You can see here I cut some sunglasses out of the black felt. Here I just cut felt into eyeballs. Thanks for felting with me today. Now you know all about the traditional craft of wet felting. All it took was warm soapy water and the agitation of your hands to transform this loose, fluffy material into a densely felted snake. Happy felting!